All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College and as part of the Rankin Technical College AWD 1000 Web Development Technologies course, I've been creating a series of video presentations that are based on the Mozilla Developer Network Learn Web Development series. And I've gone through the getting started with the web, the, the HTML structuring the web, the CSS styling the web, the JavaScript, dynamic client-side scripting, and I'm on the end now, the last one of the web forms. All right, so as we finish this up, and this won't take very long, I mentioned this previously, but this is a humongous table, as you can see here. All right, and it says the following compatibility tables try to summarize the state of CSS support for HTML forms. Due to the complexity of HT CSS and HTML forms, these tables can't be considered to be a perfect reference, but they should give you a good insight on what can and can't be done, which will help you learn how to do things. Okay, so let's look at how to read them. All right, values. For each property, there are four possible values. All right. You'll notice, what do we have here? We've got Yes, we've got partial, we've got no, and it looks like NA. So let's see what they say here. Yes means there is a reasonably consistent support. Again, you can always go to caniuse.com to try to take a look. You may still face strange side effects at times. Partial, while the property works, again, you may face strange side effects. You should probably avoid these unless you totally understand the associated side effects. No, the property doesn't work. It's not reliable. NA, not applicable, meaning the property has no meaning whatsoever for this type of widget. Rendering. So again, when we look at the... Oh, let's take a look. It says, for each property, there are two possible renderings. N for normal, indicating that the property is applied as it is, and T for tweaked, indicating that the property is applied using an extra rule. So it may be have something specific for specific browsers. All right, so compatibility tables, global behaviors. Some behaviors are common to many browsers at a global level. I won't read these to you. All right, notice though, for example, with line height, support it inconsistently and you should avoid it. With a lot of these, they're older browsers or they're, you know, they're, they're text-only browsers or whatever. All right, so this is the text field. And again, most of the time when you see partial on here, it'll be for older browsers. Text and font, borders and backgrounds, buttons. numbers, check boxes and radio buttons, select boxes, single and multi-line, data lists. You'll notice here's one that really doesn't have a lot of support for you being able to do a lot of tweaking. We've talked about that in earlier lessons. Same thing mostly with file pickers and date pickers, and even somewhat with color pickers. All right, meters and progress bars, range controls, image buttons, and that's it. So I'm going to continue on, and like I said, this has been two or three minutes and probably was a waste of my time and yours. But we are now done with our getting started, our HTML, our CSS, our JavaScript, and our forms. 
So the next thing to go into is accessibility. And you'll notice they'll talk about some guidelines in here. All right, so there'll be the overview and they'll talk about some guidelines. And then there is an accessibility assessment. All right, so that'll be next on our plate.